Hey everybody, Thomas Joseph here. Now, are you unsure about rhubarb? what to do with it, or even what is it? Is it a fruit? Is it a vegetable? Well, today I'm gonna share with you some really helpful information when it comes to rhubarb, and I'm gonna show you a really different recipe, not a strawberry rhubarb pie. What is rhubarb? Well, the answer is, guys, it's a vegetable. It's not a fruit, although it's commonly used in a lot of sweet applications. Now, rhubarb, the one I have in front of me here, this is a hothouse or greenhouse grown rhubarb, and that's really great because rhubarb is now kind of available all year round, but it is a seasonal vegetable in that it grows in this region around here. This is the Northeast region in the late spring time. And if you can find field grown rhubarb, it has a really intense flavor. It also has an even darker ruby red color, which is really great for your final dish. So if you can find it, get it. Now, the recipe I'm using today, I'm gonna to cut this rhubarb into about one inch size pieces here. And I'm gonna show you a little tip, guys. When you do have the chance to get rhubarb that is field grown from your farmer's market or if your supermarket carries it, a way in which you can preserve it so that you can use it all year round is to actually freeze it. It freezes really, really well. And the way to do that, chop it up into pieces, whatever size pieces you would typically use, whatever your recipe might call for. And then if you just throw it on a parchment lined cookie sheet, and throw this in the freezer as you would do your summer berries that you're saving for later. Freeze it until it's nice and solid, and then take the frozen rhubarb and put it into a resealable plastic bag, and you can store it in your freezer for many, many months. Now, the recipe I'm using today, I'm gonna cut up the rest of this here, and I'm gonna show you a very different application for rhubarb. Like I said before, rhubarb is typically used in sweet applications, and that's because it is a very acidic vegetable. Rhubarb is a cousin of the sorrel plant. It has nice leafy greens on top that almost look like Swiss chard, but a fact for you is that the leaves are never sold with the stalks in the stores because they are actually considered to be poisonous. They have some compound in them that are not easily digestible and therefore they're always removed before they find their way into the supermarket or the farmer's market. Today I'm going to be making a simple chutney that is a perfect accompaniment for chicken breast, pork, really anything. And to start that off, I'm gonna heat up in my saucepan here one tablespoon of olive oil. And to this, I'm going to add some onion. So I have one small onion here, a very fine dice of onion. And you just wanna sweat this onion down. You don't wanna to develop too much color here because we're really gonna count on the rhubarb to give a wonderful pink color, that wonderful pigment that's in the rhubarb. So a medium low heat here. So the onions have softened nicely and now I'm going to add some aromatics to this. I have two cloves of garlic that are finely chopped, one tablespoon of finely grated ginger. And ginger is a really great flavor, a really great accompaniment to rhubarb. It helps to brighten up this chutney a lot. And you just wanna saute this for a few minutes. You wanna just develop the flavors, burn off any of that raw garlic taste, but really bring out the flavors of the ginger. All right, so this looks good. And now to this, I'm gonna add a half teaspoon of kosher salt, a third of a cup of white wine here, and what the white wine is gonna do is it's gonna help, because white wine is acidic, it's gonna help bring out the wonderful red pigments or red color in the rhubarb. With any acid, it helps to intensify the color of any red or purple or blue fruits and or vegetables. If you add acid to anything that's green, it will have the opposite effect and it will make the color very dull um, and almost brown in color. So white wine here, I'm gonna add a third of a cup of golden raisins, and golden raisins and dried fruits are really typical in chutneys. Think of all of those great, wonderful Indian chutneys. And now I'm going to add some sugar. So this is a half a cup of granulated sugar here, and you really need the sugar to balance out the acidity or the sourness of the rhubarb. It really is a sour vegetable. If you tried it by itself, you'd really get that puckery look on your face. So you need to include a decent amount of sugar to balance it out. So I'm just gonna stir this together 
a little bit until the sugar starts to melt into the white wine mixture. And then I'm going to add half of the rhubarb. Now, you might be asking me, why don't I just dump in all of the rhubarb? Well, what happens with rhubarb, it doesn't maintain its texture. It's really not like that. So this rhubarb that I'm adding here is going to cook down fully. It's gonna fully break down all of those fibers. And then a little later on, I'll add the rest of it so that there is a little bit of texture to this chutney. So this is gonna cook for about five to six minutes until it's nice and soft and the rhubarb has broken down completely. I'm gonna pop my rhubarb that I'm saving for later in the freezer until it's nice and frozen. So it's been about six minutes. The rhubarb is bubbled away here. I'm gonna turn the heat down a little bit. You can see that it's starting to break down. All of the fibers in the stalks of rhubarb are kind of just melting away into this chutney. And the chutney is taking on a nice pink hue. I'm going to add the remaining rhubarb. So in total, I had about 12 ounces of rhubarb, so this is six ounces going right in. And this is gonna cook just until the rhubarb is tender. You don't wanna overcook this. It's gonna take about another five minutes on a low heat. So today I'm gonna to serve this rhubarb chutney with a wonderful pork chop, but you could serve this with any meat, any grilled meat would be fantastic, chicken, beef even. It would go great with cheeses like brie or even fresh ricotta and some toasted bread. I'm gonna let this cook for a little bit longer and then we will be ready to serve. So it's been about three more minutes and I think we're good to go here. I'm gonna turn off the heat. You can see the wonderful color here. There's still that really great pink color. Now, if I was using field-grown rhubarb today, this would be an even brighter, redder, richer color, but this is just as lovely. I'm gonna plate this up alongside my pork chop here. Consider this the springtime applesauce to go along with your pork chop. Throw on a little bit of herbs here, guys. And there you go. I hope I've taught you a little bit about what it is. It's a vegetable, guys, not a fruit, and some new and exciting ways in which you can use it. So when you see it at the farmer's market or if you see it at the supermarket, give it a try and uh, let us know what you're doing with it. Write in the comment section below or reach out to us using the hashtag Kitchen Conundrums. Enjoy, guys.